Hello everyone, this is John Mark Johnson Jr. again, and I'm just taking a couple of moments here to respond to a question that I got asked on Facebook, and I thought it was a pretty decent question. And it's one that I have answered in the past, but at the same time, I don't know that I've answered it all that recently. And um, it's for, so for people who have heard it before, it's easy to forget. For people who haven't heard it before, well, they're not going to know. So it was worthwhile uh, going into. Uh, so context here, context is always good. I had posted an earlier YouTube video that I had uh, done where I asked if there was a final prophet. And I said, yes, there is. That final prophet was Jesus. And... Uh, because of that, we don't have uh, modern prophets today in biblical Christianity. We do not have anyone receiving authoritative revelation from God that we would call the Word of God, anything like that. Um, uh, revelation has ceased with the one who fulfilled the purpose of that revelation. And so now the canon of Scripture is closed, and we do not have any authoritative spokesman who gets to tell uh uh, Christians what they're uh, supposed to do. The prophets have already spoken and have already told us what we're supposed to do. So it's not that we're not under authority, it's just that the authority is uh, finished and complete. Um, however, um, one of my uh, Facebook friends by the name of D got on there and asked a question that was pertinent to this, and if you're not aware of a lot of the backgrounds, it can be something that was confusing, so I said, yeah, let's go ahead and let's tackle that one. Uh, she says, I'm not familiar with the moniker spokesman prophets. It's a, it's a phrase that I referenced in the video. Uh, is it a reform term? Um, no, D, it's not technically a, a reform term. Um, spokesman prophets does, is a way that is, it's a term that defines a specific usage of that word prophet. Okay. Um, and this is something that, um, you usually have to tell a lot of uh, people, you know, different words in the Bible, um, pretty much every word in the Bible for that matter, has a range of different meanings called its uh, semantic domain. It's the fancy terminology for it. But what it basically comes down to is this. A given word can have different meanings in different contexts. Um, a word does not always mean exactly the same thing, uh, regardless of where it is. Um, very, very, very few words ever work that way in any language. Just take um, it, uh, the word English, for example. Um, if I told you that the English spoke English differently, most people wouldn't have any problem understanding what I'm saying, but I did use English in two different ways in that sentence. Uh, if I say that the English spoke English differently, with that first time I used the word English, I'm referring to people who are from a particular place, namely England. The second time when I say that they speak English differently, I'm referring to the language. So one time I'm referring to a people group, another time I'm referring to a language. Now are those two usages related to each other in kind of a, a tangential way? And even you could probably make an argument for a fairly direct way. Um, yes, they are, but they're still not the same meaning. And the same thing occurs in other languages, like the Greek uh, of the Greek New Testament, the Hebrew of the Hebrew Old Testament, uh, for example. Um, all of these languages are going to have words that are multivalent, that have different shades of meaning that depend on their context. And the same thing occurs with the word prophet. So just pulling up a definition here, and this is actually um, the definition I'm going to be using for the Logos course when it gets started. Uh, but the Greek word for prophet is prophetes, right here. And its definition is pretty involved. First definition is one who makes known an expositor. Um, this is what we would usually in today's terms call a preacher, and this is the primary meaning in the New Testament. Someone who makes things known, someone who explains things, someone who uh, prophesies things. Okay. Um, and frankly, everyone who's a biblical Christian who takes that term seriously and actually tries to understand the Bible for what it is has no problem with that, uh, with that part that we still have people who explain the things of God, who make known the things of God to us today. We usually don't call them that. We call them pastors and preachers and things like that. Um, but that that kind of prophet does still exist. But there's also other sentences in which prophet can be used. There are foretellers. And people are divided on this one as to whether or not foretellers still exist or not. There are... Um, 
basically hard cessationists who say that none of the gifts of the Spirit uh, continue into the present age. I would disagree with them. There are moderate cessationists who would say that the sign gifts, the sign gifts um, either do not continue into the present age or they should be viewed with extreme caution. Um, I would fall into that camp. And then there are people who say, yeah, they, they continue uh, today and we should have people uh, giving prophecies all the time. It's great, fine, and wonderful. Uh, they are known as charismatics or Pentecostals. Um, and yeah, I disagree with them on that extent, uh, and that they tend to be a little eager for those things, um, wh whereas I would view them with a great deal uh, more caution. But that's kind of a neither here nor th there thing, and it's not all that central to whether or not we have continuing scripture and things like that. And then also in the Old Testament, because the Old Testament was written in Greek as well, it's called the Septuagint, it's the Greek version of the Old Testament. And there you get a couple of usages that are borrowed, uh, that kind of come over from the Hebrew usage, where prophetes can be used of an intercessor. For example, Abraham is described as being a prophet in the Old Testament. In that sense, it's only being used as an intercessor. It doesn't mean anything else. It means that he's going to intercede for Abimelech. Um, Another usage that you'll see in the Old Testament that it's referred to is as a seer, someone who sees, which is fairly close to a foreteller in some respects, but it also has the sense of making things known in there as well. And then the one that was actually pertinent to the video uh, was a very specific Judaistic usage of the word where it means spokesman, someone who is speaking authoritatively on God's behalf. It's a specific meaning that exists only in particular contexts. And it has to do with the context of divine uh, revelation, not just simply repeating the divine re revelation that's already been given and explaining it to people like a preacher uh, would or, or a pastor would or um, uh, someone along those lines. Instead, it is this person is God's mouthpiece for the people. This is the dude that God is using to convey a message to either his people as a whole or to a sufficient, uh, sufficiently large subset thereof, and such that the people are held accountable for what he says. Um, that office is what ceased with Christ. That particular one. The other offices, not so much. Now, it's now, as I explained in the video, and I, you guys can go back and, and look at that one, it's the video that asks, um, was there a final prophet? You should be able to just search for it on YouTube. And it goes into detail why Jesus is the final prophet. We don't have these kinds of prophets, these spokesman prophets, that Judaistic usage anymore. Uh, but long story short, no, uh, the idea of a spokesman prophet is not unique to Reformed Christianity or anything like that. It's just how the Greek language works, and it's a distinction that shows up there. But let's go ahead and get to the rest of the question. Uh, and he says, prophets and prophecies that are mentioned after are mentioned after the ascension of Jesus. I don't think she meant the that in there, and I do the same thing, especially on Facebook. You get typing along, and sometimes you forget to go back and delete things or reread things. I forget to reread things all the time. Um, so I think she meant prophets and prophecies are mentioned after the ascension of Jesus, particularly in the book of Acts. Fully agree with you. Um, there's no contest on that one. Okay, the, the Greek word does show up there. It just doesn't necessarily have that same Judaistic meaning applied to it. That's a context-specific meaning. Uh, let's see, I would highlight Ephesians uh, 4, verses 11 and 13, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers, until uh, we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Uh, the definition of until is up to the time uh, that or when. Uh, we're just not there yet. This doesn't give the Pope all authority or justify Joseph Smith. It does state that prophets, along with apostles, evangelists, pastors, uh, shepherds, and teachers, uh, give a purpose, have a purpose, and that the purpose is to help mature the church corporately and Christians individually. Even as God told Peter not to call unclean what he is called clean, I wouldn't want to unnecessary uh, to call unnecessary what God has called essential. Um, and D, I'm right there with you. Um, I would just make sure that we differentiate the terms, how that uh, term is being used, because, like I said, in the Greek, there's different uses for that term. So using the appropriate definitions of the definitions that I just listed there. When we say that he gave apostles, oh, where is it here? Apostles, apostles, apostles. 
Alpha is at the very beginning. Apostolos. There we go. Apostolos. Right here. Um, that can mean just generally someone who is sent out. Uh, it can be an envoy. In Christian terms, it's uh, usually much more so specifically a missionary. And that's the sense in which Paul is using it in Ephesians for a missionary, a congregation establisher. Someone who's going out to either a particular region or people with the intention of establishing and overseeing uh, various communities, of uh, Christian communities, that is, different uh, Christian congregations. Um, there is a, a specific Judaistic usage, a lot uh, like prophetes, where it can be used specifically of a spokesman's, a spokesman prophet's uh, legal representative. That's not what Paul has, though, in mind. That is a very specific, very limited usage. And Paul usually doesn't actually use uh, that particular uh, usage. Um, Luke does. Luke definitely uses that usage of apostolos and uh, prophet. Luke does all the time, but Paul doesn't. Paul generally used the more, uses the more general definition of essentially missionary or congregation establisher. Uh, that's the way that Paul means it. All right, so, so he gave the apostles, that is, the missionaries, the congregation establishers, the prophets, and the prophets here would be the general usage that Paul normally uh, uses for prophet that you see throughout the New Testament, prophetes, one who makes known or an expositor. Okay, there are supposed to be people who are making the things of God known, who are preaching the things of God to people. That is an absolutely essential and vital function of the church. It needs to happen in every single church. Um, and it's also good when that office occurs in multiplicity. That is when there are multiple people in the church teaching the things of God so that there's a level of accountability and also interchange um, and interaction there. Um, yes, 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 and amen, let uh, there be expositors in the church. Um, but like I said, Paul doesn't really use the more specific Judaistic usage. Um, Luke does, though, but Paul really doesn't. Okay, and then, of course, uh, the evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. Those ones are fairly self-explanatory, and most people don't confuse them uh, too much. I will mention, though, that shepherds and teachers, um, we usually talk about pastors, and basically it's the, the equivalent of the shepherd. Um, and I just want to point out, though, that that is actually technically a little bit more personal role that goes along with teacher. Um, although we use that term usually of, you know, the guy who is you know, kind of in charge of the whole congregation, the guy who's in charge of the whole congregation and delivering God's message to the congregation as a whole, you know, speaking the word of God to them in, in time and place, um, that technically would actually be uh, the prophet, the prophetes, the guy who's doing the expositing. Um, technically, the shepherd and teacher is a little bit more individualistic, um, much more personal, just as a shepherd spends intimate personal time with his flock and a teacher spends intimate personal time with his students um, that's the dynamic that's uh, being uh, listed there that's that's the idea in mind so um, the prophets what we would normally call a pastor today is a public uh, ministry of proclamation whereas shepherd and teacher those two usually go hand in hand and that's usually a little bit more personal and sometimes, frankly, a little bit more uncomfortable. It's one thing to sit there and listen to the message preached to everyone. It's another thing to have someone sit down with you and say, there's something in your life that's not right and we need to talk about it. You know, um, those personal things we don't like as much, but they're absolutely vital. And frankly, a lot of churches are missing that. They're missing that personal accountability that we need. Um, so yes, every single one of those things that you mentioned, D, are absolutely scriptural. Um, Reformed people are not every kind of biblical Christian should affirm them. Uh, the problem, though, is that saying that you know we have these usages of that word after the ascension of Christ means that how Christ is the final prophet is the same as these kinds of prophets is not doesn't work. It's a different usage of that term. Like I said, it's a very specific usage of that word prophetes that means specifically the spokesman of God. Um, very specific usage. Doesn't show up all that often. Like I said, Luke uses it pretty often. Um, not always, though, because even, I mean, you know the book of Acts uh, that Luke is responsible for, and he does mention prophets after the ascension of Christ uh, there as well. Um, it gets used in lots of different ways throughout the Bible. And we have to be careful that we're not misapplying the definition. So, as far as spokesman, in the sense that, say, Mosman, uh, sorry, Moses was a spokesman of God. 
um, authoritative re, uh, authoritatively receiving revelation for the people in lieu of direct revelation of, of God, in lieu of a reconciled relationship between God and man. No, those kinds of prophets don't exist anymore because Christ reconciled that relationship, and so there's no longer a need for that. Uh, Christ completed uh, the purpose of those kinds of prophets. Uh, they were there uh, until uh, the final intermediary came. That's where we have the spokesman prophets. But uh, the other usages of prophets, well, some people would agree with some of them to a certain extent. There's the, the sign, uh, gifts of prophecy, the foreteller uh, part, um, things like that that people do uh, disagree on. Um, but there's usually a much more accepted uh, application of that than there is the other. Um, so, I agree with you and disagree with you at the same uh, time, D. Um, yes, there are prophets that come afterwards. However, we have to understand that the definitions in those cases are different. Um, the context is different. The usage is different. It wouldn't be uh, appropriate to call those prophets in the same way uh, that uh, Jesus is described as being a prophet like unto Moses. Um, there's a reason why in Revelation 15.3 they sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. That is, those are the cap ends of Revelation, is Moses. Moses is the first person to write things down authoritatively for us, and it's in Jesus that we have the last things written authoritatively. Um, that doesn't mean that the other offices uh, don't exist. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't have people expositing the things of God. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't have people going out and establishing churches, that we shouldn't have apostles. No, we definitely need them. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't have those pastors and teachers who come to us individually and hold us personally accountable for our uh, lives and help us and come alongside us in that way. So, yes and no. Yes and no. Um, in any case, though, thank you, uh, Dee, very much for bringing it up, and hopefully people will learn from it. And the basic message here is this. Words usually have different meanings, and you have to make sure that you're getting the right meaning in the right context. Okay, this is not something new. People have uh, realized for a long time that those words have had different meanings. You can look in a lot of different resources, um, especially in the Greek. Uh, one of the more famous ones is the BDAG. Um, which is a lexicon that was made by Bauer, Donker, Alder, Gingrich. Um, very famous one that lists a lot of these different meanings out there. Um, Freeberg's lexicon, which is a much briefer uh, one, but it still has a lot of those subtleties in it as well. Alexander Suter's, I don't think he goes into as much detail on it, his, and his is pretty brief, so he probably wouldn't have it in there anyways. Uh, but most of the more expansive lexicons will get into all these kinds of details and say, yeah, in those particular contexts, you really shouldn't use that definition. And that's frankly where a lot of translators get a little bit lazy, and they just use, instead of actually translating the word, they transliterate it. So the Greek word prophetes becomes the English word prophet. We just basically said it in a way that English-speaking people can say it, instead of actually going through and listing what the particular definition is at that place. We're really lazy, and we just transliterate it across and expect the reader to pay enough attention to the context to figure out which one's which. Um, that works as long as people are aware that there are diff uh, different definitions that are contextually dependent. But when people don't realize that, well, then, yeah, you can get a lot of different confusions out there. Well, not a lot of different confusions, but a lot of confusion out there. And hopefully this video will help take care of that. So, there are different kinds of prophets. There are different kinds of apostles. And in the sense that my video was talking about, in which we have authoritative revelation from God for God's people as a whole, no, we don't have those anymore. But we do have the other offices, and they are absolutely vital. Thank you very much for your time and attention, folks. For those of you who are in Christ, go with God and be blessed. For those of you who are not, I pray that you come to an understanding of the true Christ of history, the only genuine Savior of mankind. Amen.